So I'm on the job one day, doing some repair on a cutting machine, replacing a guide on the table. Pretty routine. Everything's going along fine when all of a sudden I hear... My heart practically pops out of my chest until I realize that someone is powering up the next machine over, not the one I was working on. It gave me a jolt, but it was reassuring to remember that I held the key. It's times like this that I realize how lucky I am that there's a policy in place to protect me. Lockout Tagout is an OSHA standard that covers equipment servicing or repair when an unexpected startup or release of stored energy could cause injury or worse. Accidents usually happen when someone decides to take a shortcut while they're working on a piece of machinery. Or maybe they don't fully understand the equipment or the work that needs to be done on it. Lockout Tagout is designed to prevent accidents in exactly this kind of situation. Whether you're someone who repairs machines or you're somebody who operates or works around them, Lockout Tagout protects you from the risk of being seriously maimed or injured. And there are some real horror stories when it comes to unexpected machine startups. Injury is just the beginning. The fact is, when lockout tagout isn't used properly, there could be added consequences affecting your job, your income, your family. Lockout tagout must be used during repair or maintenance work on machines or other installed equipment in a couple of different cases. If someone needs to remove, or bypass a guard or other safety device, or they need to place any part of their body into an area of the machine where injuries, bad ones, can happen. These are some of the different kinds of activities where lockout tagout procedures need to be used. Everything from actually constructing or installing the equipment, to changing a tool or even clearing a jam. Generally speaking, a company implements lockout tagout by issuing personal padlocks to maintenance or repair people. Before they start work on a machine, the lock holder shuts off and locks out the energy sources that feed it. When the work is finished, no one but that person can remove the lock, allowing power to be restored. Locking out the energy source helps control the risk of injury caused by what OSHA calls hazardous energy. Now, this hazardous energy, the stuff that needs to be isolated and locked out, could include electrical, mechanical, hydraulic, pneumatic, chemical, thermal, steam, or water. Even gravity can be a source of hazardous energy, like in the case of a sheet metal press when the ballast is in the raised position and has the potential to drop. As we'll see in a moment, Isolating the energy sources isn't the only thing that needs to be done during lockout. It's also necessary to drain or bleed off stored energy, like air pressure in lines or chambers inside the machine, or electrical energy stored in capacitors. Only when energy has been both cut off and drained will true safety be assured. Uh, what lockout takeout does for me is uh, it safeguards myself and my fellow associates against mechanical and electrical uh, action from uh, the conveyors and the equipment that we're servicing. If it wasn't done the same way every time, steps might be forgotten, skipped, which is potentially a hazardous situation. Lockout tagout is important to me because I want to know that my back is covered when I put my hands in the danger zone of a machine. I want to know that someone else can't come up and not know what's going on and flip the switch when my hands might be within a saw blade's reach or, or a clamp might activate and, and pin me in. Also, I don't want to do that to one of my coworkers. Those guys out there are my buddies, and I don't want to see that happen to them. Well, as a safety coordinator, lockout tagout is important to me to help train the employees on the importance of lockout tagout and how it's um, important to them and why they need to abide by lockout tagout. And even if they don't perform lockout tagout, why it's important that it's used in their area. Take a look at this machine and think about someone doing maintenance work inside of it. Can you identify where and how they could become injured? If someone was working in this area and energy was present, they could be seriously injured by these mechanisms. 